Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. And today is Friday, praise God. Listen, listen, how's the week been for you? Have you been receiving your daily bread? Have you been receiving your daily benefits? David said he daily loads, I love that scripture, man. <laughs> he daily loads us with benefits. Now listen to me. You can expect today's benefit. And if you think you've missed any day's own, hey, you can claim it all today, praise God. Say, Father, I, from my understanding, I didn't receive Monday's benefit. Now, can you add it to today's own? I'm telling you the truth. Now, you can get that friendly with the Lord, praise God, and expect a miracle. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread and every benefit that you have released for me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now hear me. Angels, go. Locate these ones now and make their words good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. Hear me. God is out for blessing to you. Because he loves you. Do you understand God's love? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we, can we go into today's broadcast? Say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Your word is truth. And it fills our hearts. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because burdens are being lifted right now. And yoke is being, yokes are being destroyed in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. We've been talking all week about how the Word of God works in us. And he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then he says, I commend you, Paul speaking, says, I commend you to, the, to, the, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And how does that happen? That happens when your mind is renewed. And how does your mind get renewed? Your mind is adjusted. Your mind is tilted to God's word. Now, sometimes we find people who say, ah, my problem is just that I always think of fornication. I always think of fornication. If I can just stop thinking of fornication, my life will be better. That's not your problem. Your problem is you have not started eating the right food. That's your problem. You see, if your food is the word of God, which is God's recipe for every human being because God said man shall live by every word that proceeds from my mouth now hear me he didn't say every word that proceeded from my mouth when you pick up the Bible and you are reading even though it is what God said that you are reading in the Bible it is the word that proceeded from his mouth but that's not what he said you will live by. I want you to get this. He never said man shall live by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He said every word that proceeds, brothers and sisters, it is present tense continuous. Now God was mindful to say that. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't something the translators put in there. It is the mind of God that you eat his word fresh from his mouth. Now, how do I know that? That has always been God's operation with man. You read in the Garden of Eden, the Bible said the voice of God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It is when God comes like that, that he gives them fresh word. Now, the moment they receive that word, 
they live. Now, guess what? God told them, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. How did they die? Now, they ate that tree. They didn't fall down dead. They didn't. They still live for many, many years, praise God, in the flesh. But guess what? They died. How did they die? Because from that day, God stopped giving them words. See? Yeah. God stopped giving them words. Oh, brothers and sisters, say keba. You know, listen, listen, listen. Can we, can we? Ah, keba roshi, ah, eh, no ungo boso. Can we? Every day. Ah, shali kaba, ya. Hmm, hmm. Can we every day just be receiving this word from his mouth? And keep receiving it every day till we get to 100, till we get to 200. You know, some people say, look, 120 is God. No, 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 no. God never said our life must stop at 120. He never said that. God was mad at man. Let me show you. Genesis chapter 6. From verse 1, so you get the background. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of which, wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, meaning that from that moment, God's Man and God started getting into strife. Strife, how? Man began to completely go against everything God stood for. I want you to follow. So God says, hey, my spirit, because God is a spirit, my spirit will not always strive with man. Why? He says, yet, oh, he says, my spirit will not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. So God confessed here that man is not a spirit. So he said, because man is flesh, I'm a spirit. It is wrong for me to always be striving with man. So what did God say? He says, yet his days shall be 120 years. Meaning God said, look, because we are always striving, because I'm always striving with man. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to limit the days of man. In terms, because man is flesh. So I'm going to reduce this because of this striving that is going on. So the, the highest a man who is flesh will strive with me or will, can go against my will is 120 years. Uh-huh. So, it was the man of the flesh that God said he was limiting his days to 120 years. Now then, and the reason is because of the strife between man who was flesh and God who is spirit. Now, we that are born into the spirit, we are born of the spirit. We are spirit beings. And two, we are not striving with God. We don't strive with God. We, we yield to God. We agree with God. We reason together with God. 120 is not our limit, brothers and sisters. Mm. Now, now, you know, sometimes we we'll say this, sometimes we we'll say, don't be talking this thing. No. Hey, hey, because you are scared of the spirit of death it has held you bondage but i command that spirit to let you lose now in the name of the lord jesus let your mind and spirit be open to flow in god's truth it is an error for 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 us to think and put a gauge and say wow my, my desire is to get to 120 Brothers and sisters, my desire is to see Jesus. Is to see Jesus. Is to see Jesus. No place for death in this matter. My desire is to see Jesus. I see Jesus 
Either he comes to meet me or I go to meet him and not through death. Because when you go by death, you don't meet Jesus. Now, this is the truth also that we need to renew our minds. When a man dies, he doesn't go to the Lord. He's in captivity with the spirit of death. He won't see the Lord because the Lord is not dead. He can't see the Lord. Is that hard for you? But you see, that's part of what he's saying. I commend you to the word of his grace. Jesus said, he that believes in me and is alive shall not die. Jesus said, anyone who eats my flesh and drink my blood shall live forever. And, and as some, someone wants to say, no, you know, you see, that live forever means even when you die physically, you don't die, you just sleep. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. Because even Lazarus, Jesus said Lazarus is sleeping. Let's go wake him up. So you're sleeping. He wants to wake you up. So why do you want to sleep? So I don't want to sleep. No place for death in our lives. Now, now we must get our minds to be accustomed to accept the fact that what Jesus said is truth and is reality. Because the fact that he said it doesn't mean it will automatically work. It's until we yield our beings, yield our minds to what he said, contemplate on it, look at it, and then begin to adjust our mind. How? Why, why do we accept death? You begin to ask yourself that question. Why do we accept death as the will of God? Why do we accept, you know, you know what, what, but, but who, 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 you know, all, what's going on? The word of God is building you up. And guess what? Do you know the highest inheritance? The highest inheritance that he has called us to be is life. Jesus said, this is why I came. That they might have life and have it in abundance. I see believers doing great works for the Lord and then suddenly begin to say, I'm getting old now, you know, so I will not be here for long. I may go any day. And when they say I may go any day, what are they saying? I may die any day. No, 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 brothers and sisters. Listen, Akubaru to say, even if you are tired, Father, help us. Help us receive this truth in our minds. Even if you are tired, what stops you of asking the Lord to send a chariot to come pick you? And I don't mean a spiritual chariot coming to take, you know, you just lie on that bed. You say, ah, you know, sometimes, you know, say, ah, if, you know, you help you say, if I want to die, I want to die like Jacob died. You know how Jacob died? Jacob finished blessing his children. And then the Bible says he, he, he folded his legs on the bed and he slept off. Or how David died. He, listen, no matter how glorious that looked, death is still not part of it. I don't accept that. Didn't you read in the scripture? Death, the spirit of death came for Moses. And God sent an angel. And the angel said, the Lord rebuked you. Take your hand off. And that's why Moses didn't die. Oh, he didn't know Moses didn't die. He didn't die. He was taken up to heaven. Elijah didn't die. What did they know that had been hidden from us? What did Enoch know that had been hidden from us all these years? Except those things are stories that were imputed into the Bible, but are false. But if you have the mind of Christ, you know they were not lies. But hey, we need to renew our mind to that place. And we accept as normal that when we are tired of living on this earth, we can ascend right into heaven without any man saying this is his burial site. 
So where is he? He's gone to heaven. Where is he? He's gone to heaven. He told us he was going and we saw him go up. It doesn't have to be the day of rapture for everybody to go. That day is the day will come to take the rest of us. But before then, I believe in my heart it is possible for God to send chariots to come pick you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe this? Because my time is up. Meditate on these things. Give yourself completely to them and let the Holy Spirit help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to me. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye-bye.